The currently declared development targets are fuel and CO2 savings, where these are possible in connection with an increase in driving dynamics. One possibility to save fuel and CO2 is by driving at low engine speeds, in other words, changing up through the gears as early as possible. To this end, engine developments are marked by downsizing and downspeeding. Downsizing is all about generating more torque from less capacity. Downspeeding means that as high a torque as possible is available at as low an engine speed as possible. These two development targets are mainly achieved by a highly efficient forced induction and a reduction in the number of cylinders. Modern supercharged diesel and petrol engines already supply a very high torque at lower engine speeds. The trend is towards even higher torque at even lower engine speeds. An engine characteristic like this enables low engine speed and therefore fuel-saving driving while maintaining good acceleration. However, this increase in torque, mostly combined with a restriction to four or six cylinders, leads to the rotational speed irregularities in the engine, particularly at low speed, being much greater. What causes these engine rotational speed irregularities? On a reciprocating piston engine, the pressure gradient in the cylinder during the four cycles produces an uneven torque on the crankshaft. On each work cycle, the combustion of the fuel-air mixture greatly accelerates the crankshaft. During the other three cycles, the crankshaft decelerates, sometimes strongly and sometimes less strongly. To enable the engine to mainly run smoothly at lower speeds, a centrifugal mass, the flywheel, smooths out these rotational speed irregularities to a certain extent. A four-cylinder, four-cycle engine has a firing interval of 180 degrees. This means that two work cycles take place during one crankshaft revolution. For example, if the four-cylinder engine runs at 3,000 RPM, there are 6,000 ignitions per minute. This corresponds to 100 ignitions per second. The engine rotational speed irregularities are therefore very slight. The lower the engine speeds, the clearer the engine rotational speed irregularities appear in the form of torsional vibrations. At 1,200 RPM, there are approximately 40 ignitions per second. This means that a work cycle only occurs every 25 milliseconds. The engine rotational speed irregularities, and therefore the torsional vibrations, are very marked in this engine speed range. If these torsional vibrations are transferred to the gearbox without being damped, resonance vibrations arise in the gearbox and in the drivetrain. In turn, these resonance vibrations cause boom and humming noises or gear rattle. In addition, higher resonance vibrations can damage the components in the gearbox and drivetrain in the long term. Without appropriate damping of torsional vibrations, the driving comfort at low engine speeds is unacceptable, and low engine speed fuel-saving driving is not practical. To date, the torsional vibrations could be reduced with dual-mass flywheels, to the extent that comfortable driving at low engine speeds was possible. Alongside the engine speeds and number of cylinders, engine rotational speed irregularities greatly depend on how much torque the engine can produce at low engine speeds. Modern petrol and diesel engines, which produce a high level of torque at a low engine speed, cause greater torsional vibrations than engines that produce less torque at the same engine speed. These high torque engines place very high demands on torsional vibration damping. These engine vibrations can no longer be satisfactorily eliminated using conventional dual mass flywheels. An innovation to efficiently eliminate engine torsional vibrations is the dual mass flywheel with centrifugal pendulum absorbers. In contrast with the previous dual mass flywheels, the dual mass flywheel with centrifugal pendulum absorbers is even better at reducing engine torsional vibrations. 
It is suited for the torque characteristic and the torsional vibration behavior of modern engines and reduces the lower limit of the usable speed range of the engine. This means that fuel and CO2 savings are possible. How does a dual-mass flywheel with centrifugal pendulum absorbers work? The centrifugal pendulum absorbers are an additional functional unit in the dual-mass flywheel and complement the torsional vibration absorbers used to date. On the dual-mass flywheel with centrifugal pendulum absorber shown here, made by Scheffler Look, there are four pendulum masses on the secondary side. These are the centrifugal pendulum absorbers. The bow springs used to date are the primary element used to absorb relevant vibrations, while the remaining engine rotational speed irregularities are effectively eliminated by the pendulum masses. The pendulum masses are arranged at 90 degree intervals and are mounted so that they can oscillate freely in the direction of rotation. The weight of the pendulum masses and the curved radius of the bearing track are precisely coordinated to the torsional vibrational behavior of the engine, so that they oscillate contrary to the torsional vibrations of the engine. With this opposing effect of the pendulum force, the disturbing torsional vibrations of the engine are reduced very effectively upstream of the gearbox. At low engine speeds, when the disturbing torsional vibrations are particularly high, the pendulum swings are correspondingly large and so work effectively against the torsional vibrations of the engine. Here for comparison are the vibrations on the secondary side without the centrifugal pendulum absorber technology. With increasing engine speed, the torsional vibrations of the engine become weaker and have a higher frequency. Due to the interplay of pendulum force and the curved shape of the pendulum bearing, the pendulum swings also become less severe and have a higher frequency. The counter vibrations adjust smoothly to fit with the engine speed until an engine speed is reached where there are no longer any noticeable torsional vibrations. Dual mass flywheels with centrifugal pendulum absorbers cannot be differentiated from dual mass flywheels without centrifugal pendulum absorbers purely by their external appearance. However, it is entirely possible to externally differentiate using the extremely typical noise behavior. Because the pendulum masses are mounted very loosely, they cause noises which can be used to detect that this is a dual mass flywheel with centrifugal pendulum absorbers. Here we can see the flange with the four pendulum masses and how they can move loosely within their guides. If we turn the dual mass flywheel in the gearbox, we can hear the typical noise of the pendulum masses quite clearly. If the dual mass flywheel has been removed and it is rolling on a rubber mat, it sounds a little different. Above a speed of approximately 60 RPM, the pendulum masses are pressed so strongly into their guide tracks that they no longer emit any noises. However, it may be possible to hear noises for a short time when stopping the engine. If the dual mass flywheel is shaken forcibly, the pendulum masses and the impact noises from the secondary masses can be clearly heard. In general, a sideways play of the secondary masses can be noticed on any removed dual mass flywheel. As the secondary mass is not supported in the removed condition, the noises and the sideways play are insignificant. All these noises we have shown result from the technical relationships displayed and represent the best available technology. As with almost every dual mass flywheel, the dual mass flywheel with centrifugal pendulum absorbers also has torsional backlash. The secondary mass can be twisted by approximately 10 degrees relative to the primary mass until a clear resistance can be noticed. It is only now that the torque has an effect on the springs. Further rotation occurs contrary to the spring forces. As this relates to a dual mass flywheel supported in an assembly, the radial play shown here is also normal and is only present once the flywheel has been removed. In the installed condition, the secondary side sits on the input shaft, while the primary side is connected centrically to fit precisely with the crankshaft. 
More interesting information about dual-mass flywheels and assessing damage to them can be found in the following Audi Service TV programs and in self-study program number 142. Let's summarize the topics again. With centrifugal pendulum absorber technology, engine rotational speed irregularities are eliminated more effectively than was possible with conventional dual-mass flywheels. In each case, the dots mark the engine speed above which comfortable driving is possible. Centrifugal pendulum absorber technology is particularly effective on low consumption and high torque engines with a low number of cylinders, as these naturally run less smoothly. Centrifugal pendulum absorber technology enables low engine speed and economic driving with high acoustic driving comfort. The fuel consumption and CO2 emissions can be reduced as a result of this. Centrifugal pendulum absorbers are not used instead of the dual-mass flywheel, but instead are integrated as an additional functional unit. The advantages of centrifugal pendulum absorber technology will in future also be used in torque converters in multi-ratio gearboxes. The noises emitted by the dual-mass flywheel with centrifugal pendulum absorbers represent the best available technology and are no reason for complaint. Unfortunately, dual-mass flywheels are frequently the subject of complaints due to these noises and are hence replaced needlessly. Please observe these notes when processing such complaints.